Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the previous segment, we discussed linear trend line and we saw that if there is an obvious trend in the data, then we can use uh, that method to forecast the demand. And when we discussed trend adjusted exponential smoothing, we made a baseline forecast using a simple exponential smoothing and then added the trend factor to, to make the adjusted forecast. Now, if there is seasonality in the data, then we have a different method uh, to use that is called seasonally adjusted forecasting. And we have already discussed what is meant by seasonality. Any regularly repeating pattern is a seasonal pattern. We are all familiar with quarterly that season could be a day of the week, a month of the year, a quarter of the year, or it could be literal season as well. The amount of seasonality is the extent to which actual values deviate from the average or mean of the data. So seasonal index is something that we will be calculating is used to adjust the forecast so that it incorporates seasonality. So this point is important that we will be generally making forecasts using some, some other methods, maybe one of the methods that we have already discussed. It, it could be a qualitative forecasting method or one of the quantitative methods that we have seen. And then we will use seasonal index to adjust the forecast that is obtained using one of those methods. Seasonal index is a numerical value that is multiplied by the normal forecast that is the forecast obtained using one of the methods that we have discussed to get a seasonally adjusted forecast. And how we can find seasonal index? Seasonal index is the ratio of every demand for a season, for example, a month, divided that to the deseasonalized average demand for all seasons. So for example, seasonal index for January could be average demand for January during previous few years divided by deseasonalized demand for all the months of the year. Or the season could be again a day of the week or it could be a quarter as well. So a seasonal index is the percentage by which the value for each season is above or below the mean. So if the seasonal index is less than one, so that shows that uh, the value for that season is below the mean. And if it is greater than one, then of course that value is, uh, the value for that season is above the mean. Uh, we will solve an example and uh, in this example we will see that the data has year to year so as a whole there is an increasing trend but within a year from month to month uh, there is seasonality so we will address both patterns the linear trend as well as seasonality in this example So here we have the past data for the demand um, for four years. And here we are taking the month to be a season because demand is varying from month to month. So first we need to find the seasonal average demand. So that is actually average monthly demand. So we can simply take average for January. Similarly, we can take the average uh, for demand for February, March, and so on. So that is the average seasonal demand for uh, for the twelve months. Then we can average of these average values 
you find de-seasonalized average monthly demand. So de-seasonalized mean we are uh, sort of ignoring or nullifying the effect of seasonality and taking that is actually the denominator in the formula for seasonal index that we saw. So, so average of these average values for all seasons is de-seasonalized average demand. Now we need to find the seasonal index. So the seasonal index will be simply equal to uh, sorry, so uh, this deseasonalized uh, average monthly demand will be the same for all months so that was found to be one zero zero six so. Uh, then we need to find the seasonal index, so that will be uh, the every demand for that season, in this case, the every demand for January, divided by de-seasonalized demand for all seasons or all months, so that was this uh, 1006. So in this way we can find uh, the seasonal index for all 12 months. So for January, the seasonal index is found to be uh, 0.612, for February it is 0.898 and so on. So you can see uh, for months where this value is smaller than one, so that is of course smaller than the average uh, monthly demand and if it is greater than one, that is of course greater than the average monthly demand. So we have found a seasonal index for all the 12 months. but we still need to find the forecast for each month for uh, 2012 in this case. So for that, we need the forecast uh, with which we can multiply these indexes to, to find the seasonally adjusted forecast. So theoretically, we can use any of the methods that we have discussed so far. So first we will see the, uh, the pattern of the demand that we have uh, here for the last four years. So if I sum for each of the four years, so you can see here that as a whole, demand is increasing from year to year. So from 9,821 to 11,000 something, 12,000 something and 14,000 something. So we can use here linear trend line to forecast for 2012 and then multiply uh, the average monthly demand with the seasonal index to forecast for each month of 2012. So first we need to find the slope and intercept. So intercept requires the known Ys. So that is actually the total demand for four years and known axes are these number of uh, years. Similarly, we can find the slope. So we need the y's and x's. And we can forecast for 2012 by using the formula A plus B x. A plus B into x is 5 in this case, that is the year number 5. So that is actually the annual forecast for 2012. Uh, so we can divide by 12 to find the monthly forecast. So that will be equal to this annual forecast divided by 12. So in order to forecast for each month of 2012, we will multiply simply the seasonal index with this uh, monthly forecast to find seasonally adjusted forecast. So that will be equal to seasonal index into 
and this 1288 so that is the seasonally adjusted forecast for january similarly you can find for the rest of the months so these are the forecast values for uh, for for the rest of the months so we have simply multiplied the seasonal index with the uh, with the monthly forecast and again you could find this monthly forecast using some other method but because we had increasing trend so we used linear trend line in this case just as a check the sum of these seasonal indexes should be equal to number of seasons so number of season was 12 so sum of these indexes is equal to 12 and some of these forecasts should be equal to the annual forecast so that was 15,457 this value so that sum is equal to this original forecast so in this example we saw how to calculate seasonal index that is the ratio of demand for a season divided by the seasonalized demand for all seasons and then we multiplied the seasonal index with the uh, with the original forecast to find the seasonally adjusted forecast thank you